Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to the Mr. Fix-It channel. The old players here starting to show its age. So in this episode, I'm going to be pulling the engine off the frame, splitting the case, replacing the crankshaft bearings and all the gaskets and seals. Stay tuned. I was sitting out there in the shed one evening, not doing too much or nothing, just kind of staring at the wall. And... Alright, so this Players has currently 6,822 miles on it. It's held up pretty well over the years. I've owned this quad, I don't know, 15 years now? Something like that. And the most recent problem I'm having is right down here. If you look, yeah, that's the primary drive pulley trying to break its way through this cover and that was my first sign that something was going on inside this motor so let me get this cover off and I'll show you exactly what's happening. So when I pulled this cover off to inspect what was going on here, I noticed this. It's really hard to get this on the camera. Yep, that's the crankshaft bearings going bad. So I guess we need to pull this engine off of here and take it over to the bench and yeah we're going to crack it open and replace those crankshaft bearings. Alright I'm going to go ahead and take the secondary or driven clutch off. That's a half inch and I'm going to go ahead and use my impact to take this off. Now usually you can just slide this off of here but they do sell a tool if this thing is stuck. Now when you take this belt off, you want to make sure that you know which side was out because you want to put this back on the same way. If you flip this over and put it back on, it's going to wear out faster. So get you a paint marker or something and, and mark which side was facing out. Usually, if the last person put it in correctly, the writing will be facing out so you can read it. So that's one way you can tell which way it is. Okay, next I'm going to take off the primary or drive clutch. Uh, this bolt's got to come out, that's a 5 8 Alright, this is the tool that I have. This is a Pit Posse uh, PP3078. And this is the primary drive clutch removal tool. So you thread this in there and tighten it down until that comes off. Before you do that, you need to put a little bit of grease right here on the end and then oil down the threads. Alright, this requires a 22 millimeter socket. I'm going to thread this in to the right, you know, tighten it until the clutch comes off. Okay, this uh, belt drive inner cover has three 7 16 bolts. So go ahead and take those off and we'll remove that cover. There's one short bolt and two longer bolts. Now I'm going to take out these four screws here. I should be able to pull this off. Mind these spacers on here. So you'll have a set of spacers on here. These will adjust the alignment of these two pulleys. So make sure you put these back the way they came off. So they were on the outside of this cover. So don't put them on the inside and then put your cover back on. Okay, now I'm going to come over here to the right side and I'm going to go ahead and take this chain drive cover off. To do that, I gotta release this fender from the floorboard and take the screws out of this cover. This is a half inch right here. There's a couple screws up in here you gotta take out, and then this will come off. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and take this chain off and get it out of our way. So I'm not gonna mess with the master link, I'm just gonna take this sprocket off. That's a half inch. Oh, 
I'll just put that back in there so I don't lose it. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and take the exhaust shield off of here. All right, next I'm gonna go ahead and take the exhaust off, get it out of the way, they're half inch. All right, there's a couple springs here that's gotta be released. So I just got my hook tool. All right, there's a couple more springs up in here that's gotta be undone. All right, next thing I wanna do is I wanna take all this red plastic off here. Get that off of there. There's just little tabs in here. You just gotta push those over and that should come loose. Okay, next thing I wanna remove is the gas tank, the air box, and the carburetor. So this is easy enough, just pull that guy off. Uh, there's a couple 3 8 bolts here. Okay, to get this uh, fuel valve off, I'm gonna go ahead and turn the gas to the off position. And you just, this is spring loaded, you pull out on this and I don't want to unhook it from the gas tank. There's a little pinch clamp on this fuel line. Go ahead and slide that guy off and pull the fuel line off. Okay, while I'm here, I'm gonna go ahead and unhook the spark plug and the over temperature light sensor here. Let's pull that off. All right, now to get the air box off of here. So we're gonna take these two 3 8 bolts out here. I'm gonna reach down in here with a 5 16 and undo the intake boot from the air filter. You should be able to pull this off. millimeter will get the choke plunger out of there and then the Phillips screwdriver will take the intake boot off and that's how you pull the carburetor off. Now this thing's gonna have gas in it so it's gonna be spewing out so you might want to drain that into something. I'm gonna go ahead and pull the uh, oil feed line off and I'm gonna plug it off. You can use a bolt or whatever I'm just using this random piece of metal here. It'll keep all that from leaking out. Unhook it from the bracket here and just kind of get it out of the way. And while I'm working right here, I'm gonna go ahead and take the starter wire off. Just so you don't break the internals of your starter, I got a, a 10 millimeter that I ground real narrow, real skinny, and that's gonna hold the bottom nut underneath the, the wire still while I loosen up the outer nut. You will break your starter. I'm gonna put the nut right back on again so I don't lose it. Okay, so there's the, uh, the air duct system for the belt drive. So there's a boot right here. While I'm right here looking at it, I'm gonna go ahead and take this off. All right, there's a couple of uh, Torx bits here. These are T25s. I'm gonna take these screws out. I'm just gonna take that loose. I'm not gonna take it out. That'll give us some room to get the engine out of there. Go ahead and take this air duct off. These are 3 8 screws here. So the battery ground wire is bolted the motor right there. This is a 12 millimeter. Uh, I think I'm going to take this thing all the way out. So there's a Phillips screw in the fuel valve, shut off valve, whatever you want to call this thing. So we'll pull the screw out of the end of it. It's a Phillips screw. We'll pull that off, like so. This only goes on one way. This will ensure that you don't put this on wrong. And then there's a clamp up inside underneath the fender. Gotta undo that clamp. And then this should come out. This is originally what your overflow bottle is connected to. Of course, mine broke into pieces and I took it off of there. It gives us plenty of room to get down here to the oil pump to get this cable off. I have to take the cable off to get the engine out, obviously, right? A couple wire retainers. This is my overflow 
There's three 8mm bolts in the cover to this. So go ahead and take those out. So go ahead and loosen this jam nut on this cable here. And then back it all the way off. Okay, once you get that nut backed all the way off, now you're going to thread that down. And this will give you slack to take the cable off. Now if you wanted to, you could disconnect it from the throttle lever up here and feed it through the frame and everything and then pull it out with the motor and disconnect that after the motor's out. So that's a, also an option. Okay, now we got a harness. It's coming out of the flywheel side that goes with the stator and the pickup coils. This wiring harness here, we gotta unplug all this. This uh, brown wire here is held on by a screw that goes into the reverse rev limiter. This is a T25, so we'll take this out. Now we got all those wires loose. Those will come out with the engine. We'll go ahead and stick this cover back on. That way nothing happens while I'm taking that apart. I'm gonna take these two shifter linkages off. Now if you hold the ball stud with an eight millimeter and take a 10 millimeter, you can pull the nut off. Let's keep in mind that this is the only one where the nut is on top. And we'll go ahead and take the shifter and get it out of the way. Give us as much room as possible to get this engine out. I'm just gonna put this dangle down here out of the way. Okay, so I'm gonna be looking right through the frame here. And right there is the drain for the radiator. So I'm going to go ahead and drain the radiator fluid now. Uh, don't forget to open the cap up, otherwise it'll just trickle out. Alright, just because you drain the radiator doesn't mean you got all the fluid out of there. The engine's still going to be completely full of coolant, so I'm going to pop this top radiator hose off here. I'm going to take my air hose, I'm going to try to seal it off and I'm going to try to push as much of this coolant into the radiator so it'll drain out as I can. Okay, we got most of the coolant out, but we didn't get it all out. So I've repositioned my bucket up underneath this lower hose. I'm going to go ahead and take the lower hose loose and get the rest of the coolant out. Hopefully this don't make a huge mess. Alright, not bad at all. Okay, I'm going to start undoing the engine mounts. There's uh, one on top here. It's got 916 nuts. So we'll go ahead and take this loose. Alright, I'm going to unbolt it from the engine. So there's two half inch bolts right here. Alright, now you can take the uh, bolts out of the engine mount down here. a 9 16 nut. Now to get this last one out, you got to stick your long extension in through this way. Now if I've done my math right, this thing should be ready to pull out of here. Oh, I just broke that. Son of a bitch. Well, I broke that sensor right off. So if you're doing this, you might want to be real careful or just go ahead and take that thing out of there. But I think that's the only thing it broke. So let's get this thing over to the bench. Well guys, I can see that this video is going to be really long, so I'm probably going to break this up in two or three different parts. So if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Consider subscribing to see the next episode, and don't be afraid to fix it. Thanks for watching.